All right, guys. So I, I, it's story time. It's Tyler, it's Tyler Tail time. Tyler Tail time. I'm going to bring on the homie Gorilla P. I don't know what happened to the homie D. Oh, um, but yo. So me and Gorilla P were talking earlier. And we were just talking about the weather. And what conversation were we having about the weather, P? Uh Oh hell no, nah, nigga. <laughs> nah, talk about the weather. Talk right, that's what it was when I stepped outside. I was like, hell no, nah, nigga. <laughs> it's too damn cold out here to age. <laughs> nah. And, and I and I told you a story. I was down in the A in the snow. In the snow. And my was putting you up in the Grand Lux Hotel. <laughs> no, nah, not no, nah, the Crown Prize, Crown Plaza Revenue. Crown Plaza, hey. So as I watched it, I had a whole different story I was going to tell, but as I watched that clip for the second time, because I saw it earlier in the session, yo, exactly what happened to Chris Brown happened to me. So, I, you know you know how you block shit out your mind? So yeah. this was the flip side to that. So um, I'm in Atlanta. I go to work. It's snowing outside. It's ice on the, on the, uh, on the 285. And ain't no traffic. I'm from Chicago. I'm used to driving. You know what I'm saying? And ain't no traffic. Ain't nobody in the A, bro. I'm like the only motherfucker on earth in the A. I don't know. It's just crazy shit. And um, they put me up in the, in the Crown Plaza Ravinia. Uh, a girl that bullied her way into my crib. So that's a very important part of the story. For those, for those who don't know, man, I moved to Atlanta with a cousin I didn't know that I never met because these wonderful fucking toddlers who hate you and hate their kids to have parents. My my young my dad's youngest brother, my uncle Jerry, he had just found out he had a daughter. She was 26 years old. He knocked up a chick in college and the bitch never told him. He just found out he had a daughter. Danielle was uh I never Danielle. I never beat something. That's fucked up. That's my cousin. Anyway she stayed in Atlanta, bro. He had just met her. I had never even heard of her. I told my uncle I was about to move to Atlanta. He said, you got a cousin down there. Your cousin D. I talked to her a couple of times. I said, man, can I crash at your crib and stop finding the crib down there? Because I'm going to move to the A. I got a couple of dollars. I help you out in the bills, whatever. She was like, cool. She had a two-bedroom apartment with no furniture, no couch, no beds, no shit. I had an air mattress. You know what I'm saying? I, I killed at her crib. For, for a month or two, you know what I'm saying, I found a job. I had a couple thousand, you know what I'm saying, I had a few racks on me. You know what I'm saying, I think I'm going down with like 12,000, 16,000, something like that. I had a couple of dollars on me. You know what I'm saying, but when nobody rent me an apartment because I didn't have no job history. You know what I mean? I'm like, yo, well, I paid two months security first month rent. Like, mm -hmm. I got, because the first time I ever met my cousin D is when I rung her bell like, hey, I'm, I'm your cousin. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know this girl. And I don't feel comfortable being in her crib. And I'm sure she's gonna do her thing too. You know what I'm saying? So I was this chick, of course her name Keisha. Her real name Keisha. She was a Keisha and her name was Keisha. So that's full Keisha Powers. We're staying in Paducah, Kentucky. I said, yo, Keisha. but I met her at 112 when I went down to Atlanta. That's where I met her at. Mm -hmm. But she lived in Paducah, Kentucky. She was just down there One to get broke down by a nigga like me, right? Shout out to One Tweezy, because that was my spot. Shout out to 112 with a play as well. The stash more cash than versus Dale. You know what I mean? And you, know, well, I, you know what's well, you know what's so crazy? But you ain't gonna go in. You park a lot pimping. We park a lot pimping out there. Facts. Facts. Because so the line be so fucking long. Hey, you had no no truth, no, no, nothing else but to shoot outside. <laughs> nigga, them lines was welfare cheese long, man. Man, all day. So we out there, my man. Still a single mother law, right? <laughs> <laughs> Second eight waiting list long, nigga. Man, long oh, as shit. oh, wait a minute. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> What's that last long as shit? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, I, and I'll put uh, down there. When bitches be partying, no, they ain't pay their rent. They get evicted on Monday, but they out there. <laughs> out there with three hundred dollar here and a fifteen dollar dress, nigga, just out Man. there. <laughs> so I had I had Bob Keisha, 
I had got like eight phone numbers when I was in the parking lot on 112, but I flew back to Chicago. Matter of fact, this would be the anniversary when I met this goofy ass bitch because I went down there on Veterans Weekend. Okay. Well, I just lied. Which which one is Labor Day weekend? I went down there Labor Day. Labor Day, yeah, that's like yeah, that's September. the one in September. Yeah, I went down there Labor Day weekend for four days. My man came down from L.A. He had had his uh his Lexus shipped mm-hmm. out, so we in we in the parking lot, leaning on my man Lexus with the Cali plates. I'm shining. We talking, man, nigga. Diamond studs, crazy gear, crazy. I mean, hat matching the outfit as usual. Actually, I was three sixty out back then. I was three sixty out. Right but we we out there, we kicking it. Me and my prime, you know what I'm saying? We kicking it. We had a, of all the eight girls I met at one twelve, Keisha was the only one that flew to Chicago and let me smash. Right, all the rest was like, "Yeah, I'll fuck you when you come back in time." I'm like, "All right, cool. I, I got pussy on later. Wait, that's what's up." Anyway, fast forward. So now I'm in Atlanta, trying to get out my cousin D career. And shout out to D, man. I love D for that, man. I love her for that. And I said, yo, Keith, how long you been at your job? She said, I've been at my job like seven months. Of course, she a toddler. So where she work? Walmart. Oh, but she been at Walmart for like seven months. I said, well, mm-hmm. Keith, do me a favor. Why don't you co-sign this apartment with me so I can move up by my cousin crib? Now, this bitch stayed in Paducah, Kentucky. That's where the fuck she was supposed to stay. I just needed a name to move out. For the mm-hmm. So I found a spot out in uh back in the day before you knew how to make fake pay stuff, but let's go forward. <laughs> the fucked up part is I had already been making fake pay stuff. That was my hustle. You know what I'm saying? But <laughs> but I didn't have an Atlanta connect. Like there was, I didn't have a verification for people to call and blah blah blah. Because I just hit the eight, right? Okay. And what I didn't think about at the time was using the 800 number and just have it forwarded back to, rerouted back to my father, but I digress. Mm-hmm. So, long story short, I found a crib at Norcross. Mm-hmm. And as soon as I moved in, two days after I moved in, this goofy bitch come in with her, her little sister, and her mama. I said, what the fuck? My name on the lease, I live with you. I said, hold on, bitch, that wasn't. I asked you for a favor. I didn't ask you for for a roommate. Like, bitch, you didn't quit your job and move. Like, bitch, you already know. Well, she's a small town, you know. And it was Walmart. She transferred. She's like, oh, mom, sis, I got to do this paying the rent. Let's go. That was not my aim. That is not why I came. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> <laughs> So now this bitch boom. Man, that's what they do. They quick to bring their mama and everybody up in there. So you know, I, I she owned the lease though. She she finessed me, but she really didn't fin- I asked, I brought bullshit into my life. Cause I right. based on expediency, because I'm trying to get out of here. And I'm like, yo, sweetie, you out of town. Ooh, okay, cool. That bitch wasn't there a week, my nigga. When I say not a week, my nigga. Mm-hmm. First of all, her mom was delicious. Her mom was bad as shit. And I, w- mm. and I wish to this day I can't find the Fiesta video. If y'all ever saw the Fiesta video, R. Kelly and Nas, not the one with R. Kelly and Jay-Z, y'all can find that one. The original Fiesta video with R. Kelly and Nas, her sister, who looked just like their mama, is in that video, wearing all pink, sipping mimosas at the thing. Bad as, man, Ronda bad as shit. Their mama bad as shit. To want to buy this shit, and she got a mean cooking game. You can't be that bitch a 12. They mama was a 12, nigga. But all of them, you know, mama wanted to be young, they all going to the club and cat suits or whatever. But I digress. And they got this one that week. It's snowing in Atlanta. I'm trying to figure out, I'm like, but shorty can stay, you know what I'm saying? Like, it is what it is. Like, man, she's like, I'm gonna stay here. My little sister gonna stay here. And I'm like, hold on, this ain't how this shit gonna work. So I'm trying to figure that out. I still gotta go to work. Snowing in Atlanta. They shut down the city. Anybody who ever been in Atlanta, you know they shut that bitch down for a snowflake. Mm-hmm. They got me in the Crown Plaza, Ravinia. What is that shit at, bro? On 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 San, on Sandy Springs, right? On Dunwoody, Dun, yeah, it's on. Ravinia, um, yeah, right there, Dunwoody, right by yeah, Perimeter Dunwoody, Mall. Yeah, Dunwoody. Right when you get off two eighty five. Yeah, and it's right there. 
Yeah, man. So, but I stayed in Norcross. So, you know, you got to hit that circle, that 25 circle. That's a, yeah. So, she called me. She was like, where you at? I'm like, yeah. That's what's out of Norcross. Yeah, you probably was on 285 Norcross, yeah, right? Yeah, 285. Told you to hit the circle. Got yeah, that in the arm. Because you got two. The 285 is the good side. The 85 is the uh, Mexican but side. But the 85 go north and south. The 25 is the circle. So, I was just taking it. You're right. Go circle, right. But with Norcross, you have... If you're on the 285 side, which is like, no, I think I was on the 85 side with the sure. Mexicans, bro. Where they were selling cheap furniture. Yeah, yeah, the 85 side, you be the Mexicans. Yeah, I there. was on the 85 side, the 85 to 285 to go around. Shout out to Pollo Compare. I ain't man. never go to Pollo shit, cause like I said, you go to Pollo, right? nigga, this week two in this bitch. Be. So Latin chicken, my nigga, that Latin chicken is. <laughs> shout out to Latin chicken, though, man. You know I love chicken. Man, I tell you, that, yo, you cut the A, we gonna go over there. You be like, yo. Yeah, add that to the list. <laughs> so anyway, man, it's snowing. I'm in the Crown Plaza. She called me. She said her mother going back to South Carolina because she borrowed my car. I said, well, I'm at work. I said, I left my car at the at the hotel, but you can come get my keys. You know what I'm saying? And you can use the car. She's like, I got, I'm going to do your laundry. Whoa, whoa. She's trying to, you know, fucking clean her way in the crib, right? Because, you know, I don't want her to be there. Right. So she come get my car keys. I'm not remembering that I left my phone in the armrest of the car. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to call whatever, whatever, whatever. About two hours later, I get a phone call at the gig. I'm like, what? Motherfucker, you got bitches anywhere? Nigga, you got this bitch out here in Chicago? You know that? I'm like, so they set the fuck up. Because I work all my girls. This Mary, your secretary, she ain't new to me, bro. You know what I'm saying? I broke my girl. So I had a chick. That's why I said I've been knew about that shit. I had a chick that I bought a credit card rewrite machine. Statue of limitation, no. A credit card rewrite machine in Chicago that was mm -hmm. sending me, you know what I'm saying, about $1,600 a month, right? I'm throwing that shit, like, we're making maybe two stacks a week. She said, I'm like, sure, to keep the rest. Because when I left, I had a, I had a, uh, a condo on the lake. On uh Farwell and Sheridan for the niggas of Chicago, y'all know what I'm talking about. Not Farwell. Jack ja, ja Queen or some shit. Anyway, right off Tulane and Sheridan. Or Jarvis and Sheridan, however you want to say it. I had a motherfucking condo with her. That rent was 1050 a month. The, the bitch in Chicago, she was trying to move out of mama house. And I was like, I'm gonna move to the A, and I just renewed my lease. I said, Shorty, you can live in my apartment. So I got somewhere to lay low when I come back to Chicago. I'm gonna come down here. I said, so I'm gonna help you get this money. Cause she, I was like, how much can you afford to pay? She's like, I could probably afford, you know, I can afford it. I could probably afford like 600 a month, maybe 650. And I'm like, and I'm like, shorty, my, my shit 1050 plus the parking. Like, but I'll go half with you. So I got a roommate basically for a crib I ain't in cause I got to subsidize her rent for her to stay in my crib. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, so you gonna have to work this off. So she, we get money. So she sent me like, you know, sixteen hundred two stacks a month all the time I'm down there, and that's paying my rent. So I, I ain't even touched the thirteen. I went down there with. Me. Well, I did, but you know, gas like that. But I'm like, yo, woo. -woo. So when she see the phone and she see the bitch, I say, shorty, that bitch more valuable than you. Mm -hmm. Like, that bitch ugly though. I said, bitch, you bad, but you broke. Like this bitch more yeah. valuable than you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Let that say, I say, man, shorty, look, I ain't on that shit. Because I'm at work. I finally get a chance to get off work like two days later, because that's how long it took Atlanta to get some fucking salt truck. Y'all slow as shit on mm -hmm. the winter removal shit. So I come to the crib, and I come to the crib, it's like 10.30 at night, and I got to be back at work at 5 in the morning. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I come to the crib. I get my phone. Grab something to eat. I go lay down. As soon as I lay down, this bitch decides she wants to fight. My fucking this, 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 and this, 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 and this, 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 this. I'm like, keep chill. I gotta go to sleep. I gotta go to work. Fuck you and fuck that time and this, 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 this. Because women make permanent decisions on temporary emotions, right? This, 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 this. I'm like, keep leave me alone. This, 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 this. Keep leave me alone. 
and that look, bro. And I'm sitting on the I'm I'm sitting on the bed on the edge of the bed, just mm-hmm. playing. At that time, man, I had a cheap ass phone. I was playing Snake. Remember that game Snake? They just come on your phone and say, mm-hmm. I had a little Nokia phone. I'm playing Snake, dog. Mm-hmm. Trying to ignore this goofy bitch while she yelling. Shout out to the great graphics of the Nokia. <laughs> <laughs> Was that shit like two bit? <laughs> <laughs> was it? Because <laughs> shit, Nintendo was like eight bit. Oh, that and that shit was like below. The, that shit had to be like two, two, two point three bit. <laughs> Nigga, I'm playing snake, and the bitch talk herself into a fight. <laughs> of course. And kicked me in a solar plex, nigga. Like how how Xerxes did on three hundred. When he kicked them off, like, this is Sparta. The bitch gave me a, this is Sparta. Mm-hmm. The bitch kicked me in the chest. Reflex. I throw the phone. You know what I'm saying? High yellow bitch. Native American. Her mama Native American. Her daddy Irish. High yellow bitch. Hit her dead in the nose. Mm. The phone hit her nose. Both eyes blacked up. I had never seen no shit like that. Yeah, because you. Yeah. So. Under the Chris Brown act, I felt bad. Like, damn, I didn't mean to do that. My bad, shorty, but damn. You know what I'm saying? You gotta... right. but now she's in rrr mode. She, now she's full attack. The bitch swinging and kicking so hard. I try to uh, push the bitch out the, the, ba- the bedroom and lock the bedroom door. The bitch kicked the door in on some incredible hope shit. As she kicking it in, I'm like, I'm going to have to pay this shit. And then, goddamn it, man, she just rushed me, nigga, and the bitch grabbed a knife. Like, out the kitchen, supposed to kick the door. And goddamn it, I'm wrestling this goofy ass whore, and I bite her titty. You, you, you fucking two. Because I'm trying to get this bitch up off me. Like, bitch, get off me. I bit her titty. The, the, the titty. I'm so mad at myself. Even though it's not my fault. I didn't ask for none of this. Right. But I'm so mad at myself. By now it's midnight. I still got to be at work at 5 in the morning, which means I would have to leave out the crib at 3.30 in the morning. Mm-hmm. I'm like, yo, I'm going to just leave. All that to say this, and this more bullshit happened after that, but all that to say this. I when I heard the Chris, the Chris Brown story in real time, I was like, yo, he got set up for failure. So then what happened? Motherfucking motherfuckers trying to cancel me, niggas bitch trying to get me to lose my job, which he did. You know what I'm saying? Like all type of shit. Had to talk to the police, all type of shit. Because of goofy bitch. And then, now that I lost my job. Ain't no apartment. Right, no apartment. Everything that come with that shit. 